Because I seem to have this habit now that every time I complete a puzzle, I feel like I have to do this. Hey guys. So today we're going to compare how both Eboo and Masterpieces stand up to my non-permanent storage method. Now, for those of you who are new here, I'll quickly go over what I'm talking about in terms of the non-permanent method. And if you haven't seen my first couple of attempts using this method on two other brands, then I'll leave a link down below to where I did my first puzzle storage video. But then after we quickly go over that, you're going to join me as I try to use my puzzle mat for the first time. Now, I'm not sure how well or how bad this is going to go for me, but I'm sure that'll be interesting. I'm really curious how this is going to turn out. And we're going to use this on my masterpiece puzzle. So let's get down to business. First things first. Let's go over Eboo real quickly. Now, I was successful in putting this puzzle away using my non-permanent method of choice. But I do have to say, it wasn't as easy as the Buffalo Games puzzle. All the pieces did hold up very well together. I was even able to lift it from the puzzle board and it stayed in one piece, which was great. So just doing that alone made me realize that this was actually going to work. So I did my usual counting of pieces on each side just to make sure it fits within the box and then try taking the sections apart. But the reason why I say this wasn't as easy as when I did it with the Buffalo Games puzzle was because it was almost like the pieces did not want to come apart at times. And areas that you didn't want to come apart would. So it felt delicate in some areas, but where I really needed it to come apart, it was a little difficult. There were some casualties along the way, but it was nothing disastrous. Once I got the section that I wanted out, I did any little repairs I had to do and I saved it in the box. And I did that for the rest of the puzzle. Overall, it wasn't the smoothest process, but I got the results that I wanted in the end. And just to give it some kind of support or cushion in the box once all the sections were inside, I just took the bag that the pieces came in, kind of folded it up and put it in the middle and just covered the box. Now I plan to store this box laying flat but then I realized, well, I have nowhere to put this flat. So it has actually, for the last week and a bit, it's been standing vertically. And I haven't opened it up to see what it looks like. So um, let's see. Because I didn't really put any like bubble or anything to keep it supported. Oh, look. That fooled me for a second. Ah, look, guys. Oh, well, you see, that's not terrible. It's still trying to hold. Now I just folded it up. What have I done? There we go. So as you can see, oh, I'm trying. So the hold is not as strong as with Buffalo Games. Everything seems intact in here, to be honest. Nothing has fallen apart in here, which is great. And I've been ha I've had it standing up the whole time. Obviously, I'm trying to like take the sections out. And some of the pieces do come out, but I mean, I just pop them back in and it's fine. But overall, this is really not bad, honestly, for standing vertically. And I didn't put tape on the box. I probably should just to keep, just to make sure that it stays, you know, closed. But I mean, that's all I've done. Seems pretty darn good to me. It's not bad. Considering that it wasn't the strongest holding puzzle if that makes sense it it holds up it does the job which is nice now if it were to fall apart one day if i open it again or fall to a million pie pieces i'm not going to be too heartbroken because honestly that puzzle was pretty easy in my opinion to put together and it didn't take me very long so i won't be so crushed so that's fine now let's move on to masterpieces now one thing i noticed immediately after i completed the masterpiece hershey park puzzle was how strong it held together because I seem to have this habit now that every time I complete a puzzle, I feel like I have to do this. Not bad, huh? Watch me drop it. Oh, geez. I'm knocking it into thin. Look at it. It's still holding together. I don't know if you could see that, but one section, I just banged it against something. And all it did was bend slightly, but it's holding on. Now, I haven't done this one yet. So let's do that together. All right, so let's get started with this one here. Let me get my box. All right. We have, let's do our counting to 10 by 11. So <clears throat> always get your box ready so that you could start popping the sections in. All right, let's get busy. Oh yeah. Oh, this is magic. 
This is wonderful. Look how easy that was. Oh my goodness. Look at that, guys. We have very thick puzzle pieces here, so that's why. This worked out really well for this brand. They came out fairly easily. There was probably maybe just about five or six pieces that came loose from the edges. So that was an easy fix. They stacked on top of each other really nicely and they went into the box really well. So honestly, I think Masterpieces did a better job at this than Buffalo Games. And it just has to be because of those thick pieces. It was definitely much easier to do than on the Buffalo Games puzzle. So what do you know in terms of my favorite non-permanent method of storage for my puzzles? It looks like Masterpieces has hit first place. Buffalo Games is number two now. And Ibu's at third place. But that's okay. Seiko doesn't even make the list. It didn't even try to make the list. But anyways, let's move on to the puzzle mat. Hit the like button if you have one of these puzzle mats. And also, if you do, let me know if you use it very often, but let me know your personal experience with this. All right, here we go. Now let's see what the instructions are. First, we have to spread out and flatten the mat on a smooth surface. Then we have to fully inflate the tube. Please note that the inflatable tube is not for life saving. Anyways, roll up. Make sure the jigsaw puzzles are flat before rolling up the mat. Place the inflated tube at one end and then roll up the mat slowly by applying even pressure. Then lastly, fasten both ends of the mat with the enclosed elastic bands for easy storage and transport. All right, guys, I'm going to do my best here to film this, but let's open this up and see what we have inside. All right. So here we have the mat. I guess these here are the elastic bands. They have Velcro on them and it comes with two of them. So let's put those on the side because we'll need those last. Here's our inflatable tube. Ugh. The only dilemma I'm seeing here is that I gotta inflate this. Oh, this is a lot. I have asthma. I'm gonna be wasted by the time I'm done with this. Okay, the tube is inflated. That was, that was strenuous. All right, and let's open up this mat. It just seems like a piece of felt fabric, to be honest. It's nothing sturdy, obviously, because you have to roll it up. Let's lift up the Masterpieces puzzle, and let's get this mat under it. All right, so we have this on. This seems pretty big. I guess it doesn't really matter where you start with it. All right, let's try here. I guess we do this. Right, so start on the edge and then just roll from there. Okay, I feel, I feel in here the puzzles crying a little bit. Okay, all right, now it looks like we have a sausage. So once you have your sausage ready, put your elastic bands on. All right, I mean, I think that's it. The puzzle's inside. I mean, you're probably not supposed to do this. I don't know why I'm doing that, but I guess just to see how well this lets the puzzle hold up. All right, what happens if I do this? That probably wasn't a good idea. The last part of the test is let's open it and see what's happened to my puzzle. That's pro this is probably not a good, ex you know, I just kind of smashed it on the table, but let's see. I guess that's not bad, right? All you have to do is kind of flatten the pieces back down. And, I mean, it did its job. It's It saved the puzzle. And you could put the tube anywhere once it's all rolled up. You could store it in a closet. I mean, I guess if you like to keep your puzzles that way, you'll have multiple sausages in your closet. But, you know, this works, really. I'm I'm surprised. I would be curious, though, how this can save a puzzle that is not fully completed. To me, that sounds like that would be a real test, because if you need to stop your puzzle midway, store it somewhere else until you can get back to it, will it hold up well if it's not fully completed, or does it have to be fully completed? I don't know. I think that's for another video. We're going to have to try that next time. But obviously, with that, you would have to start the puzzle whilst 
this black mat is on the table. So yeah, I think we'll try that next time. But I think honestly, this puzzle mat is, it was a success. This, it works, which is fantastic. This is great. I kind of want to do it again now. Wow. I mean, as I said, you just got to push them back down, but that's not bad at all. This is fantastic. I would recommend this. This is good stuff. But I would be curious how well this would work for a number of puzzle brands. Let me know what brands you've used this puzzle mat on. I'd be curious to know. That turned out better than I expected. So yeah, I don't know how well that would work for a half completed puzzle or one that's, you know, barely started. Probably not well now that I think about it. But again, let me know your experiences using a puzzle mat. But yeah, it's good stuff. I just got my sausage hanging on the side there on a pile of puzzles that I need to find a home for in my house. But it does the job. That was fun. I'm really glad that the puzzle mat worked out for me and it wasn't a catastrophe, which was what I really expected, but thankfully it wasn't. So if you're interested in picking one of these puzzle mats up, and I highly recommend it now, I'll leave a link down below in case you're interested in looking more into it. But anyways, guys, I hope this video gave you some good information on these puzzle mats and help you get an idea on different ways to store your completed puzzles. But yeah, this is pretty useful. And speaking of useful, I'm going to have a video coming out soon on kind of like my favorite puzzle items, favorite puzzle must-haves. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go figure out which puzzle I'm going to do next. And it might not necessarily be a flat jigsaw puzzle. So if you want to find out exactly what I'm talking about, and if you're new here, be sure to subscribe so that you can keep up to date with all my puzzle reviews and see what new tips and tricks I come up with. And I always got new puzzles coming in. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.